Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And today's January 20th we're, when we're taping, because we tape on Tuesdays. You might not be seeing this. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube, you probably are seeing it. Um, I'll be posting to YouTube. I don't even know if she can post I to YouTube. I will be posting to Odyssey, awesome. the uh, uncensored I was like, I don't even know any of these other things. So I'm like, oh, this is Well, I know Ron Paul got uh, banned off everything. You know, a lot of people who are like just legitimate alternative voices to things. I'm not going to say names, but I do have one friend, right, who does post things that you're like, you know, and they make me think, what the heck are you posting that for? Well, they got banned. They got shut down until the 23rd. Apparently, the 23rd seems to be the day that everybody's on, like, in lockdown. Oh, no, I got whatever. locked down But I think 6th. it's funny. They they commented that I'm in Facebook timeout until the 23rd. And I just joked to myself because there are some people that you're like, gee, I can't imagine what you could have possibly said. <laughs> I mean, some people just don't think before they, like, some people really are, um, Sure, but you, know but you know what? Even those to. people should not be censored. We have a constitution in this country that says we have free speech. There is only free speech. And if you don't like someone's ideas or how they're communicating with you, the only thing we do is we counter that with more speech, right? We're right. in the game of persuasion, yeah. conversation. I'm doing... You know, I'm having so, a very um, unique conversation, and conversation is being used broadly in this this term. Sorry. Um, with some of my um, extended family because there are some people that I'm, I am always interested to try to understand what somebody else's point of view that is different from mine. Like if you believe that this is happening or X happened or this is to be true and I think something different, try to make me un- at least understand where your point, where your point is coming from. Or just call me a name and then <laughs> use vulgarities and profanity against people who are asking you the same questions. Because that's an effective way of convincing people or learning from other people is definitely calling them names and swearing at them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. I find, you know, I was talking to my dad um, on Sunday and I find it so interesting having been raised in a home where like we would always talk about mm-hmm. issues. Like, as you know, it's a debate, everyone around the table. They just will not engage anymore. And I can't figure out if that's um, sort of a reaction. Because I think there's an important thing that we're losing sight of, right? When you criticize a certain system or a certain way that things have been done, I think the people who support that system... Take it personally. Take it very personally. Too many people are taking too many things personally. I mean... Well, I think that's that's by design, right? So, uh, you know, we just had MLK Day and, like, the whole thing, right? And, and, you know, and and I watched this wonderful, wonderful documentary, which I would love to recommend for everyone back home. It, uh, I was on a call last week, and actually Colonel Ellen West was on the call, and he recommended the movie. It's called Uncle Tom. It is... uh, Black voices, so black conservative voices, you know, all the mm-hmm. usual suspects, Candace Owens, you know, uh, Larry Elder, who I, I had no idea really much about yeah, him. Yeah. You know, I didn't grow up here, so I think sometimes I like just miss things, right? But really, if you're interested in just a different perspective or really like, oh, here's a group of people I don't really know much about. Right. Uh, what I really, really liked about the documentary, and obviously, like, Uncle Tom is an yeah. inflammatory yeah. name, right? I mean, it's sort of a denigrating name, and everyone in the documentary sort of starts with their story about when someone called them that, right? Yeah. So it is very personal, but it was just really, really fascinating to sort of hear in their own voices people who are, are you know, these are mostly conservatives, definitely mm-hmm. not libertarian, but, you know, conservative probably primarily Christian Mm -hmm. conservative voices talking, you know, about their journey. And everything is from this note of self-empowerment. And there is a lack of victimhood. You know, they talk about this sort of culture that we've created in America where it's a competition to the lowest common denominator (laughs) of who's like the biggest victim. And so they really skew that. So I think it was on Netflix. Highly recommend. I think it got like 9 out of 10 rating currently. And I loved every second of it. And it's winter, so we have all the time in the world to watch that. So we can hunker down. Yep. Um, So. Yes. So. (laughs) It's funny because I said, oh, I brought this to talk about. And Carla said, oh, I didn't see that. And I'm like, oh, this will be fun. So there was an article that bubbled up into my Facebook feed. 
Oh, see, so because there I go. have no idea what's happening in the world, folks. Um, and this <laughs> happened to be in the Conway Daily Sun, although I did see that the same story was in the Concord Monitor. But Conway Daily Sun's a legitimate newspaper, and I couldn't help but click on it. So um, it's only a little article, so I guess I should just read it. Um, this is in Gorham, New Hampshire, and if you don't know where Gorham is, it's just south of Berlin, so a little bit to the east of Lincoln towards the main border. Right? Small town. Under 3,000 people live there. When out-of-town bird-watching enthusiasts dressed in camouflage and carrying long-lens cameras drove into town on Sunday to see flocks of bohemian waxwings, which apparently is a rare bird for New Hampshire. Oh, the bohemian waxwing! At, <laughs> at least one local resident suspected them of being domestic terrorists. Oh, right? <laughs> There was a New Hampshire Audubon, for those who don't know, have a rare bird sighting thing. And there's a thing in the Sunday paper in the Union Leader that will say, you know, here's oh, yeah. all the rare birds. That. And they're usually on the seacoast or up north someplace. And somebody, you know, some bird enthusiast sees a bohemian waxwing. And, ah, oh, let's go see the bohemian waxwing. Um, a Mechanic Street resident saw some folks in camo with long lens cameras walking down the street. She'd seen some trucks with political flags racing up and down Main Street last Wednesday, which now would be, this is the day that the problem in D.C. And put the two together. <laughs> so she called the police oh, who came and chatted with the birders. Oh, my goodness. So let me get this straight. Gorham, New Hampshire, way up north in New Hampshire, someone who lives there saw people in camouflage let's not even with long lens cameras not doing anything out of the ordinary unless maybe taking pictures or looking through binoculars is that out of the ordinary in the northern part of new hampshire but now then somehow connected <laughs> these bird watchers with now it doesn't even say that the people racing up and down the street were all that we know is they had political flags I don't know if they were wearing camouflage and that was somehow now hunters wear camouflage lots of people up north just in their day-to-day -day lives wear camouflage so i was perplexed at one how do you make these connections in your brain and may actually call the police because you think they are domestic terrorists and two the police actually responded well, you know, I mean, this is part of the, the fear mongering, right? It's this part of this idea that we've just scared people into well, like, and that, senselessness. The I guy mean, I can't from think the, of a better way to describe Society, it. The Audubon Society. And then this made me even laugh even more because I'm like, no, this shouldn't be. He said, um, he's concerned, however, that misperception has raised fears in more than one resident. And he requests that. Online sites add birders not to wear camouflage in towns or suburbs. What? Given the current uh, tensions, no, given the current stupidity, I would strongly <laughs> suggest that birders not wear camouflage and clothing when birding in developed areas. Gorham is now a highly developed area, and I'm sure Mechanic Street in this town of 3,000 people is highly developed, and we should not wear clothing that we're normally wearing because some crazy individual i'm sorry made some bizarre correlation between political flags on trucks on the same day that something happened in dc has something to do with people in camouflage watching birds well so you can't make this up so so uh you know we I would actually love to sort of timeline all the fear stories over time, right? Because I watch a lot of documentaries, mm. we mm. talk about that, and so you can see over time, like, what are they scaring you with, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, COVID's probably run its course. I'm confident after the 20th, it's really gonna be a non-issue. <laughs> Unless, of course, I did also hear that there is now a move to start double masking. Okay, cause... Uh, because if one's good, two must be better! We should put them over our ears. <laughs> Well, I think some people should probably put them over their eyes. Maybe we at should this just stage. put a bubble. <gasps> yes, you know, honestly, I mean, you know, ah. Anyway, so so you can see over time how there have been these uh, 
scare tactics, yes. right? So, you know, 9-11, that it became terrorism, then it was international terrorism, mm-hmm. then there was like, oh, people aren't scared enough of that, let's throw in some domestic well, terrorism. And, and school sh- was, shootings, there was going to be mass shootings. Then there were the school shootings, and there was the uh, SARS, and there was this, then, you know, and actually with SARS, if you go back and you look mm-hmm. now, you're like, oh, they tried? It didn't, we but didn't, it just we didn't, didn't take, take right? right? So then they had to wait a while. So honestly, on my 2021 bingo card, <laughs> well, I got crazy down for flash bird watchers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for alien invasion. <laughs> A, a false flag, not a real one, but I feel like there's a lot of priming going on for that, and that would just honestly make my 2021. So I guess my point is, you know, when people are trying to scare you, maybe one thing people can try and do when you're like just at home, mm-hmm. like when you have this level of anxiety that's just rising up mm-hmm. in you, um, you know, the important thing to do is to stop right. and to say to yourself, am I in danger right now. Now, typically you'll be sitting in front of your TV you having like, your oh. heart race because there's scary music and someone's telling you to get really riled up about something. Dun, dun, dun. Switch off your TV, not this show, but switch it off. And then just ask yourself, am I in any danger right now? Like within your real milieu, not what people right. are telling right. you. Is this really something that I have life? to be super concerned about? And am 99% I... of people's lives are not that nope. dangerous, nope. should not be filled with this nope. level of fear. Let's not lose sight, please, also of the fact that in 2021, in the world, this is the best off we as humanity (laughs) has ever been. Remember that the natural state of humanity is poverty. So anyone who's not living in poverty, we've already lifted them out of it through free markets and through individual liberty. And don't panic. Do not <laughs> call the police because you saw someone who's a bird watcher and you've just decided, ooh, I'm going to be scary. scared of my friends and neighbors and people around you because that is a very extremely destructive and unhealthy way to live. So, so speaking of poverty, huh, um, so there's at least one bill in the legislature um, to reinstall a minimum wage in New Hampshire because we don't have a minimum wage in New Hampshire. Well, it's tied to the federal. It's tied wage. to the federal minimum so wage. We don't actually have our own. Right? Um, this would make it twenty two fifty an hour. Right. <laughs> I'm like, you can't make this uh, stuff up. Well, that's, they, that's their anchor because right. they're like, okay, so, so if it's seven twenty two fifty. And then I there's talk they that there'll be a federal minimum wage of fifteen dollars an hour. And it, speaking about irrational conversations and trying to understand what people are saying, we've had I had a um, lengthy conversation. I think it was on Keith Murphy's wall because Keith said, you know, his, restaurants are struggling as it is. To bump the minimum wage up to fifteen dollars an hour would make the tipped earnings. Six seventy-five an hour, but people make tips above that, so like that's misleading. And that, like, how, where would restaurants ever get? They'd have to get rid of, you know, uh, barbacks or um, you know, bus boy. They, people would lose jobs. And I had one woman on there who was just going back and forth that she used to make seven fifty an hour as a server plus tips, and it can work. And when I finally got to the point of saying, okay, well, do you believe that people in Berlin, New Hampshire, should be earning the same amount as somebody working in downtown DC? And if so, can that restaurant in Berlin, New Hampshire, charge the same prices as they can in downtown DC? And she kept trying to turn it around. And Mm -hmm. she said, well, I was in Bedford, Pennsylvania. So I looked up and come to find out, the me- I learned the median house price in Berlin, New Hampshire is $86,000. The median house price in Bedford, Pennsylvania, where she claims things were very similar, is double what it is in Berlin, New Hampshire. Yeah, and no. the median house price in D.C. is $670,000. <laughs> Those three communities are not the same, nor should a federal law dictate that not only those three communities, but every single community in every single state of this country should all be identical. So people working in rural Tennessee should earn as much as somebody working in Seattle, Washington, or New York City, or Los Angeles, or Dallas. I saw a fantastic cartoon on this particular subject. So it was a, let's say it was a fast food Mm place, there was a customer, there were two people behind the counter. So there was a cashier, someone who was maybe making the fries and and the customer. So the customer like takes his order and it's this tiny little hamburger and Mm -hmm. he goes, 
uh, $12 for that tiny hamburger? And the cashier and the person behind the cashier is like, oh yeah, I got fired today. And the guy who's bringing it up goes, well, I'm making $15 an hour. <laughs> and I thought there in a nutshell is what the issue yeah. is. You know, when it's people math. hear something like, oh, you're against the minimum wage. What you hear is, because you've been trained to hear this, by the way, is, oh my God, you hate poor people. You want everyone to suffer. You're an awful human being. No, what we are is people who actually understand economics. So how does this work? Exactly what Temi just said. If you put up the price, right, right. nationwide, right. so you're not, you know, you're not accounting for, for localism and, you know, right. then, so now things are equally expensive. So in Berlin, New Hampshire, your hamburger is now become a Gordon Ramsay, Las Vegas priced mm -hmm. hamburger, $25.99. They're very, very delicious. <laughs> worth going for but you know like a super expensive right. hamburger you can't sell that on south willow street right i mean or you can try but you're no. gonna go but how is that person up? who even makes 15 dollars an hour gonna buy that sandwich so i did like this i i love spreadsheets this is well because i have to satisfy it in my head that i'm not i'm not jumping to some right incorrect conclusion so let's assume 12 dollar now people are making 12 dollars an hour because I don't want to go from seven twenty-five to fifteen in math, because people in New Hampshire don't make seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. Mm -mm. So let's go from twelve dollars an hour to the fifteen dollars that they're talking about at the federal level. And right before you do that, something that folks back home should understand that there's very, 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 very few people in America make the actual minimum right. wage. I think it's less than like 0. It's 0. very 5. small. It's even, a very even small in amount. States. So the question then also becomes, why are we constantly talking about something that isn't actually an issue? I mean, scary. it's a divisive issue. Yes. It's a class war issue. It's all of that stuff, right? It's someone manipulating you again to like right. freak out about stuff that's not actually relevant. Um, sorry. So no, 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 go ahead. So to move somebody, from $12 an hour to $15 an hour. Just not even talking about the increase in cost of goods. Costs an employer, for somebody working full time, $130 and change every single week. More. Now let's- In taxes or no, why? No, it over. Oh, oh the just the pay. So, cause I you can't you. just take $3 okay. yep. times 40 and say, well, it's 12, 120. Because there's another $10 in taxes mm -hmm. because not only do you pay Medicare and do you pay Social Security? Your employer pays just as much on the back side of things, and then they play, pay the federal unemployment tax, which and it is up to like four, it maxes out, I think, at four hundred and twenty dollars a year. It's six percent, but only on seven thousand dollars. And then they pay workers' comp, which I tried to get a specific answer because I really don't remember, um, and I keep forgetting to look it up at work. Uh, workers' comp is based on your income, so if and it's, I my numbers here are using one percent rate which is not really what it is. Some some job things, it's like more like 4%. So every $100, your employer is paying $4. So this number is based on 1%, which is very, very conservative. But imagine an ice cream stand where kids are making $12 an hour to scoop ice cream, right? And say you have 10 employees or the equivalent of 10 employees that I are working- I want to go to that ice cream right, stand. <laughs> working for 40 hours a week. If you increase the minimum wage from $12, to $15, we're talking about $1,300 a month that that employer has to now pay. But where the, are they supposed but to- But the rich capitalist pigs can <laughs> just afford it, Tammy. Do, right, but do, do people really think that restaurant owners and ice cream stand owners and small retail shops I mean, and insurance but, agencies and pretty much every business owner under the sun is just rolling in money yes. that they don't know what to do yes, with? Yes, that's exactly th what everyone right? believes. They do. That's what's crazy. Oh. Like. I, Keith Murphy was talking the other day, and he had a really good point in, in this conversation about t tips versus base salary and whatnot. And he said, hey, look, last night I worked at the restaurant. He must have been the bartender. He goes, I don't pay myself an hourly rate. He goes, I made over $29 an hour in tips. Why are we complaining about how much servers are making? Because they're only technically making $3.27 an hour on in data. When they're actually making $29 an hour. He's like, how about this? As oh, $29 an hour during COVID when everyone's yes. on restricted yes. hours. I mean, I was, a, I mean. Yes. It just, uh, a good, good waiters and waitresses. Can make good money. Make good money. And if you're doing it right and it's in cash. 
Yep. And which is ironic because I think the IRS comes up with a number that you made in tips, whether not based on what you tell them, but based on a percentage of the sales of the restaurant. So I think Keith ends up having to pay Social Security and Medicare and workers comp I might have to pay it on your tips. So, it's insane. Basically, you know, it all sounds good to, to say, oh, everybody should make twenty two fifty an hour or oh, everybody should make $15 an hour. It here's, sounds here's, good on paper, and in reality, it just doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. And here's a question maybe people should grapple with is, oh, if it's the fat capitalist pigs, you know, the business owners, and they're exploiting their workers, and like all the nonsense yeah. we hear, right? It's like, why did at least... 30 Manchester, New Hampshire restaurants go out of business. Go out of business. If they're so rich. If they're so rich, why can't they just? That's one question you need to ask yourself. The second question you should ask yourself, if we're just going to make up magical numbers of what right. people should get paid without right. any sense of the actual economics of it, why let's make the minimum wage $1,000 right. an it, hour. It, why not? It, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And that is a question, and the answer is out there. So I highly recommend well, and it's people like, go. And it just try to have conversations because I. This is something that when I was in the legislature and I served on the labor committee, I actually did research on how many people make minimum wage because I thought, geez, maybe I'm, maybe I'm buying into some rhetoric that nobody makes minimum wage. But we did the numbers. There's no mm -hmm. way to actually get a. You know, you can't count, but you can get from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and from the Labor, Department of Labor, you can get a fairly good idea. And back then, this now we're talking six years ago, back then, if there was 3,000 people in the entire state of New Hampshire, including kids who are working part-time summer jobs, you know, doing, scooping ice cream, um, it, uh, we would have been surprised. So when you talk about these things and when state reps actually, I'd love to go and listen and, to this. And let's just be fair and equitable. I'm just going to throw all the words out here today. So if there are 3,000 people in New Hampshire who make minimum wage and we have to talk about it all the friggin' yep. time, then let's say, I don't know, weren't there like, how many, how many tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of people voted for Ron Paul in the primary. A lot. He, he came second, second on both the tickets. So let's say it was a few hundred thousand, yeah. right? right? So I actually sent this email to NHPR once when they were talking about the minimum wage. And I was like, how about this? For every time any publicly sourced place, and I would include all our news <laughs> agencies at this stage because they're all part of Pravda, Every time they talk about the minimum wage, in order to be fair and equitable, they have to talk about free market economics as right. well. Because they're Because it's the same discussion, but we don't want to talk about that side. Right. Because We don't want to talk about the business economics. We don't want to talk about how it can work on its own or how it is working on its own. We only want to talk about the, you know, and, we, and I well, feel and bad I think because that's they, exploitative, they, right? they're Where exploiting you can people. Right. They are totally exploiting lower income people. By telling them that this is going to improve their life, when the reality is, is when that hamburger is this big, or this hamburger or is that guy ten dollars more, job. or somebody's out of work completely, and isn't getting six hundred dollars a week bonus money from the federal government, you know, like the reality will then set in that, like, oh, wait, I ask people all the time who aren't making fifteen dollars an hour, do they think their lives would get better if they made a min made the minimum fifteen dollars an hour, and don't they say well, no well, because they can more, do math well more money is always going to be sorry we don't know what we knocked over, over down there sorry. um i mean you know obviously the more money you have probably i mean it doesn't buy happiness it doesn't it does make it, life it make things more comfortable or easier i'm willing to grant that but there's the seen and the unseen and we are in this paradigm right now where people are only talking about one side of each equation we've said this from the start i said it back in february march last year you know i'm like you can be concerned about several things nothing is that binary it's not like masks or no masks or right. it's well it's mandate or no mandate right, right? it's it's like we we this idea of it's this or this is so wrong. It is how they are separating normal human beings fr from being neighborly, right. right? Like we're living in this like people are really binary struggle that is not the human condition. And it's not good for people. It's not good for communities. It's it's just not good for like you said neighborliness. Like people 
people are just so angry. And I don't, you know, like people, this is the argument. You've got half the world, half of the country going, well, they're angry because of Donald Trump. And I'm like, one man can make a half of a country angry? That's well, amazing. Well, it can if but you then, have all the media saying, working to do that one thing. I mean, that's all that then happened. you've got the other half saying, you know, they're angry because they're, you're saying they're angry. You know, and it's just... Oh, uh, this is, goes back go. to we were talking last week after the show, and we said, um, you know, I have this theory where I think the AI... So, so there are all these algorithms, and hmm. I actually think they're becoming sentient, and part of this partisan left right thing is actually I think the AI escaped well I and think it's out there because I do think when we we're talking about it as far as social media and like why certain people are getting their Facebook posts shut down and other like when they aren't actually do there are some people who can't look I have Victoria never posted Sullivan. something that right. deserves to get no. kicked off and Victoria of couldn't post in an education a homeschool group that like okay how but you did have a really good point so like what if all the the algorithms are more than just an algorithm, and we've now attached them to an AI who the AI adjusts the algorithm to meet the needs, but then the AI, all it takes is the AI to not be able to think it through in in human sense, and then now they're deleting people. Well, two things. One okay, is, so I don't know. Now we sound crazy. I don't know. If, <laughs> no, I, I don't know if you remember this, but it was probably four years ago or so. I mean, it was a while ago. There was an experiment where they wrote an uh, they wrote an AI algorithm mm -hmm. that was supposed to do I think it was like almost machine learning off Twitter. So there was this algorithm that was just going to read Twitter and then it was going to be like tweet on its own. Mm -hmm. Within two days, that thing Twitter account for the AI thing was a raving racist. Mm -hmm. Neo-Nazi, yeah. insane person. And I was like, wow. So you've got to imagine that there's like, stuff going on. Well, Dan, and we know the machine We're going to run out of time, but uh, Dan showed yeah. me a thing on, the, on TV the other on the screen the other day. Um, it was an AI that is taught to be able to um, create a graphic. Yep. Oh, my God, the things you could say anything. You'd be like, I want to see a giraffe milkshake. And, they'd show you, <laughs> and it would generate a picture of too. a giraffe milkshake. And you're like... Oh, how is it doing that? It is a little concerning. Yeah, it is. Um, we're going to run out of time. Yeah, we didn't we get to talk Next about week. right to know at and all. The, and legislature, legislative pro policy and see if process. Like, we're going to be testing it today. Carla, me, signed up uh, to support some bills and to oppose some bills regarding transparency and open government. These are Senate bills. I signed up to see how the process would work with like Zoom and how we're going to testify, yeah. how it works if it's remote and all of that. So I will report well, back. I think we talk about that tomorrow next week completely buy my book ecstatic pessimist it's on amazon and on my website carlagarrick.com stay warm it's not going to snow for another 10 days what's up with that it's almost february i'm actually missing this i know i, I would lie. like it a little bit but i'm not complaining because you're all safe because we paid for a season full of snow plowing so <laughs> it's not going to snow this year anyways that's all we got we'll see you next week thanks guys bye